come to your comfortable seated position and welcome to your yoga and let's have a bit of a wiggle close your eyes move around drop the head roll the head back do whatever works for you have a bit of a stretch a nice seated stretch it's lovely this because we've got that lovely solid base and the top can just wiggle about and explore what feels tight, what feels like it needs a bit more TLC. Ah, and we allow the breath to settle and we set aside everything else as we bring that attention into ourselves. So make sure that you are proceeding with your practice today with lots of love and lots of just quiet attention to yourself. So let's bring the hands to the chest. So one hand on top of the other, it doesn't matter which way around you go. And let's take a long spine, crown of the head to the ceiling, kind of sit. And let's lift the sternum a little. So if you can lift your sternum, lengthen, feel that you're long through the front of your body as well as through the back. So when we lift the sternum, sometimes there's that temptation to feel like you're, um, not the temptation, but you almost kind of go back a little too much. And you'll feel it in your shoulder blades. So if you're feeling a bit of compression, constriction in your shoulder blades, then write that so that you're fully lifted in the top half of your chest and your back not just one or the other. And then the slight engagement of the belly. And we're gonna to breathe today together with our hands on our chest like this. So we can feel the breath coming and going. So in through your nostrils and out through your mouth, all your nostrils. And in. And out. Carry on at your own pace. And there's two places to give your attention to. One is on your breath as it comes in, feeling the quality of that air as it comes in through your nostrils. And then hearing the sound of your breath and trying to keep it smooth and steady and even all the way from the start of the breath right to the end on each exhalation. And at the same time, giving your attention to your hands, to your chest, noticing a very light touch on your chest. You're not pressing, they're just there. That movement in your hands and your arms, that lovely circle of that connection between your hands, your arms and your chest. The circle of your breath. And at the same time, a little peripheral attention on lifting the crown of the head up. Very gently, not forced. So three rounds of breath. Make this one your first one. Last one. And then you take your arms down by your sides, put them down onto the floor. So pressing your hands into the floor either side of you. My fingertips are pointing out away from my body. My arms are pressed in quite tightly into my sides. And I'm just pushing down into the whole of the palm of your hand, maybe a little bit into the fingertips and just pushing the shoulders up, pushing the hands down, lengthening through the arms, just feeling that in your elbows, hopefully. Just warming them up. We're gonna be doing a little bit of down dog. We're gonna be doing all sorts of 
lovely stretches of just making sure that our elbows are awake, upper arms are awake. Can you feel that in the backs of your upper arms? Hopefully you can feel that in your whole torso if you're pushing down as strongly as you possibly can, as if you're trying to lift your hips up off the floor. Maybe if you've got long arms, you can, I can't. And release. Bring your hands to your knees, bring your knees in, uncross legs. So we're gonna have a nice tight tuck in, thighs to belly and chest. And then we're just going to wrap the arms around and drop the head down. So exhaling, dropping the head down and sending the mid back out. So we are holding the arms gently around the front of the shins, dropping your head down and we're gonna get a really strong stretch in the back of the neck and across the shoulders. And completely up to you how far you lean back. You can round out the upper back, mid back, and lower back here. Curling the belly in. And letting the head drop down towards your chest. So chin to chest. So focus on that rounding of the back. And then when you've got that settled, focusing on taking your chin even more in towards the top of your chest. Not holding your breath, continuing to breathe. And then we're uncurling, so head first, and then the spine, mid back, to upper back, well done. So that's our little forward bend. We're gonna warm up the neck by doing a little bit of a back bend. So interlace your fingers, or hold on to your wrists quite firmly. We're holding on to the front of the shins and we're going to lean back. Lean back a little, keep your feet flat to the floor, very light touch. And then we're going to look up and drop the head back. So a little bit of balance here, you've got to be quite strong, quite aware so that you don't go tipping backwards. If you do turn it into a roll, try to relax your shoulders. So head is back, chin is up, and send your chin up towards the ceiling. So you're gonna jut that lower, lower jaw up as far as you can. And release. Slowly and gently using your arms, nice and strong, coming back to center. And we're going to come into Navasana. So Navasana is usually an asana I use at the end to get down to lying on the floor, but we're going to start off with this lovely little balance. So legs up, arms out. So if you need it, your arms are gently touching onto the sides of your knees. If you don't, they are floating by the sides. So the challenge here is always, always to get that back straight and head and neck in line with your back. As soon as you do that, you realize that there's a lot more going on in the core. Bring your knees together, bring your heels, bring your ankles together. So we're holding. And five, four, three, two, and one. Gently coming back, come in for a hug. So keeping the feet off, bring the chin to chest, forehead to knees, curling round, stretching down. Hopefully you can feel that down either side of your spine or maybe just feels like one long stretch in the middle. And then we are coming back up and back into Navasana again. So we're going to alternate legs here. So bring yourself into Navasana again, uh, holding on or floating at the sides. So up to you. 
And we are going to take the right leg down and stretch it out. So feel like you are sending your heel away, engaging the thigh, and then we're coming back gently. And left leg, no, yes, that is the left leg. Well done, Kate. Floats down, hold, stretch, engage, and then coming back. And then we're coming in for another hug, bring the knees in, drop the forehead down, back into that stretch in the back of the neck. Whew. not as cold as it has been lovely and one more time so let's come back into our navasana again so into navasana and right leg goes for a little explore straighten out send that heel away engage the thigh straightening out the whole of that leg nice and strong so a little bit of Gentle work on the knees without weight bearing and then coming all the way back and then left leg goes down. And of course, wonderful work for the core as well. So we're trying to lift the chest, head, neck and back in line. You might be starting to feel that in your mid back. And then we are coming back up and then we're bringing the feet in, holding on. So. Left hand, nice hold on the left leg. Right hand, nice hold on the right foot, actually, not leg. Uh, but if you need to, hold on at the shin instead. So we're going to straighten out the right leg. Nice straight leg. Left leg's just hanging out there. Straight leg, straight arm. Try not to let your foot pull your elbow and your shoulder out of the joint and the socket. Pull back. Make that arm strong. And then we're going to bring the right leg in, left leg out. Same thing. Oops. So lovely balance. Make that left arm strong, pulling the leg as well as the leg pulling the arm. Lengthen through the back. And then we're going to swap around again. It's a good stretch on the back of the leg, so the hamstring stretch, and a good stretch into the shoulders as well. And then we're swapping around, bringing the right leg right in, left leg out. And breathe. And then we're bringing the left leg in and we're going to take both legs out at the same time. So nice double balance. If that feels a bit shaky, go for one leg at a time again. Otherwise, right leg and then left leg and balance. If this feels really challenging, you can always bend the legs and hold on under the back of the knee, not and then directly at the top of the top of the back of the leg. Hold, 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 hold. And then we're going to be releasing the hands and holding the legs where they are. Okay, so release the hands, take the arms off. We're going to move the legs together, keeping them still up. High, bring the arms together and then tuck and fold come around into that nice easy forward roll of the spine and then bringing your feet down to the mat well done so we are going to do a little bit of counter pose here we've done a lot of rounding we're going to be doing some nice back bend action so we're going to come down to lying on the floor and 
Okay, so just a simple bridge. We're lifting the hips, hands pointing down towards the heels or next to the heels, lifting the hips. So you know your bridge. How far up do you like to come? Are you a uh, roll the shoulders under kind of person? Or do you prefer to keep your shoulders flat? Do what works for you. Pushing the floor away with your feet, lifting your chest, lifting your hips. Remembering to breathe. Nice, deep, steady, even breaths throughout your practice. In through your nostrils for the whole of your practice, please. So enjoy that stretch on the back of your neck. Pushing the back of your head down into the mat. Pushing your feet into the floor. And then rolling down. We're going to go down really slowly. Try and go one vertebra at a time. Lots of control using your breath. Well done. And from here, we're going to roll up. So if rolling up isn't good for you just come over onto your side and bring yourself up otherwise you're rolling up and coming into a squat go around to face you so in our squat today we are looking for that extension in the backs of the ankles so a kidney stretch that obviously extends into the backs of the legs as well so into the calves a little bit into the hamstrings. And from here, we're going to be unfolding to come up. So we do this quite a lot. We're going to just lift the hips, take the head down, and come into our first inversion. So hips up, head down. Don't worry too much about the connection between your torso and your thighs. Just allow everything to be easy and relaxed. A little bit of a bend in the knee. Head, neck, arms completely at ease, at rest, at peace. And then we're uncurling to come up. Nice and strong. Use your legs. Use your back. Coming all the way up. There we are. Coming up to standing. And we're going to come into Trikonasana. So we're taking the feet out wide. Coming into triangle pose. So we'll go over to the right first, toes out to the right, take the arms up and wide, and then we'll slide to the right before bending over. We're trying to keep the hips sort of where they were, if we can, without sending the bum out behind. And then sliding the right arm further down, Getting a really lovely side stretch in the whole of the left side of the body. Compressing into the right. And breathe. And we're going to lift to come out. So we're lifting up and out. Keep your arms up. Let's just change the feet. So take the left toes up. Now right toes facing forward, shoulders relaxed. And a slide to the left. 
and then a gentle tilt to the side. All the way. Nice strong neck here, right arm. Really engaged, all those muscles engaged, sending the fingertips up towards the ceiling, making sure that that right shoulder is open and we're not curling around. <sighs> Remembering to breathe as well. So much to remember. And then we're going to lift to come out. Tension on the right hand, lifting up and out. And hands to hips, feet facing forward, so toes are forward. Send your hips back, send your head forward. Let's keep head and neck and spine in line. Lift your kneecaps, a gentle bend in the knees. You might feel a lovely stretch on the inner edge of the legs, especially in the thighs. And then hands to the floor and let's come into downward facing dog. So taking the feet a little closer together, walking them in, still keep them quite a good distance apart, at least a foot apart, just a little bit wider than the hip width if that works for you, but work out what does work best. I like a nice stable base for my downward facing dog, so I can focus on lifting the hips, lengthening through the spine, keeping the shoulders wide. Let your head and neck be completely at ease here. So no tension in the neck. Try to ease the shoulders as well. I know they're doing a lot of work. But keeping them wide helps. And pushing the floor away gives you a little extra length in that line from your sit bones to your wrists. And we're still holding and breathing in through your nostrils, out through your mouth. Now just looking to your hands, we're gonna bring ourselves down into a forearm. Hold here, so bringing your forearms to the mat. A little bit of extra challenge. Top of your head comes towards the mat. You can rest it on the mat if you like. Hands are either clasped or flat to the floor. Engage your shoulders here. Engage your biceps, your upper arms. Nice and strong. in your arms and across your shoulders. And then we're going to walk the feet out and come forward into a low plank. So looking forward now to your hands, stepping your feet back, coming into a low plank. Forearm plank. Pushing the elbows down, lifting your shoulders up. Nice and strong again across that chest, shoulders, upper arms, forearms, solid base there. Sending the heels back, pulling the belly in, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the thighs, head and neck in line with your spine. And then we're going to come down to the mat, so knees, and then taking your belly down, releasing your toes out behind you, keep your ankles a bit of a wiggle, wiggle up all the way through your legs.
So let's take the arms out to the sides as if we were coming into a kind of goddess position. Take your right arm down to the mat. And then we're going to take the right shoulder down to the mat as well. Pressing your left hand into the mat. We're rolling the body out, but keeping the right arm and right shoulder where it was. So we are just putting a little bit of pressure onto that shoulder joint. Stretch across the front of the shoulder on the right side. So do the same thing on the other side. Coming back to center, left arm comes flat to the floor, elbow bent, right angles, right hand pressing into the floor, keeping the right arm where it is. And opening up the right side. Again, just stretching out across the front of the left shoulder. And then back to center. Keeping the arms out to the side. We're going to work the back a little. So quite a lot of the time we find ourselves bending forwards, doing forward work, sitting. We're going to strengthen the back muscles here. So pressing the tops of your feet into the floor firmly. Engaging your calves, knees, thighs, and glutes. Engaging the muscles in your lower back and mid and upper back. Starting to lift the head. <sighs> lift your chest as much off the floor as you can. Hands are just on the floor for support. <sighs> All that work is happening in the back, back of your neck. Lifting your chin. If you find it hard to resist pressing into the hands, you can bring them off. Pulling your elbows back a little, opening up the chest. We're holding, holding, holding. And then coming back down to the floor, bringing yourself into Makara. So a bit of a rest, resting the neck. Oh, that which was lovely after the pressure of holding everything up. So allowing your neck and head to be completely at rest here. Relax your feet, relax your glutes. Here we go, let's come back to moving in the back again. So bring your hands either side of your chest this time. So hands either side of the chest, elbows pointing up and back, gaze forward, so lift your chin, bring the back of your head to the top of your back. Press the tops of your feet in, let's engage legs, glutes and back and let's start to move again. So we're coming into more Bhujangasana now, Cobra, so lifting through all the effort in the back of your body. Not too much into the hands, if anything at all. And then let's add on. So take all of your weight, stay exactly where you are and take all of the weight into your arms. Release the muscles in your back from doing any effort and any work here. And then if you can press away, come up into whatever version of Cobra works for you, Bhujangasana. So feet are engaged again, and your back is relaxed. Send your belly forward, send your sternum forward. And there's lots of debate as to what you need to do with your head in Bhujangasana. 
I think do what works for you. If you feel like you want to extend and lengthen through the front of your body, bringing your head up and back, go ahead and do that. If that feels too strong, gaze forward, keep your neck long, your chin lifted. Do what works for you. Shoulders are wide though, so we're pressing into the floor, but we're keeping the shoulders strong and wide. And then we're going to slowly come back down. So very, very slowly. Centimeter by centimeter. Nice, slow movement down towards the mat. And then when you get there, tuck your toes under and let's come back into balas. So bring your knees forward. Take your heels to your hips. Lengthen through your body and then lay your body down onto your thighs, bringing your forehead down to the mat. You've still got that nice length in the torso, but your hips and your heels are in touch with each other. And either send the hands forward or bring them either side of your feet. If you're bringing your arms forward, extend and stretch so that you're opening up under the arms, getting a really good stretch under the arms. Going to come into puppy, their arms forward if they're not already looking forward, and then we're lifting the bottom up, but keeping the torso and thighs joined together, sliding the arms forward. Torso and thighs stay together as long as possible, sending yourself forward, and then bringing your chest to the mat. So bottom up in the air, chest to the mat. Arms extended forward. Very strong on the shoulders. Good opening up under the arms. And just an interesting change for the head and neck. And then we're going to be coming all the way back. So you use your arms, bring yourself back. Coming back into a kneel. So we're coming into kneeling. If kneeling doesn't work for you, if it's not comfortable, then cross legs or have your legs straight out in front of you. We're going to take the right arm up. And we're going to take the left arm round and down and behind and see if we can join hands. If you can't join hands, hold on to your t-shirt and creep fingertips together using the material of your shirt. So with neck, it's an interesting one. We want everything around the neck to be strong and have that full range of movement so that it's not something else moving from around into the neck. Strong stretch. This is one of those movements that if you don't do it for ages, you really notice where you've lost flexibility. So we want to be sending the sternum forward and a little bit of an arch in the back at the same time as moving the arms and shoulders. And we're going to be releasing right now. Straightening out. Nice and slow, 
changing over to the other side. And again, always interesting to see which side is more flexible, whether they're exactly the same, whether you've got a bit more give on one side than the other. And again, sternum lifted slightly, long in the front of your body and in the back. So not too much of a back bend. Keep your head strong here. Don't allow that upper arm to push the head and neck out of line. And we're going to come out of here in a minute and we'll come into a kneeling side bend. Again, if you're uncomfortable in a kneel, take yourself into a cross leg sit, into Sukhasana, or into Lotus if you're feeling like Sukhasana is something that you've done, been there, done that already today. And we're going to release now. Slowly release. Slowly coming out taking the arms out either side, stretching your arms out as wide as you can. So fingertips as far away each side as you possibly can, lengthening through the whole of each arm, relax your jaw and your chin and your neck. And then we can take the right arm down, the left arm comes up and over. So we've got a nice pressure into the right hand here, pushing into the right hand, and allowing the weight of your arm to add into that nice stretch in the left side of your body. Now you might have your shoulder, your right shoulder up towards your neck. So if you can slide that right arm away a little. You might get a little bit more of a bend. Compression into the right, squeezing the right ribs, the right side of your body. And then we're going to lift the left arm up first to come out nice and gently. We start off with the left arm tucked in, right arm comes up. So pressing the right arm in and then coming into that side bend. And then sliding the left arm away, making a little bit more space. So that's a lovely stretch up under the arms and the shoulders. Easing out any tension there. Remembering to breathe deeply, steadily and smoothly if you can, where you can, when you can. And then let's come up. Right arm comes up first. And then come up. Ah, there we go. So one more stretch for the shoulders and upper body. Taking your hands behind you, clasp them together. Or if you if that's tricky, find a piece of material or hold on to the t-shirt. And then we're going to try and bring the if you've got your hands clasped, try to bring the heels of your hands together, your palms together, and then we're going to send the arms down. So straightening, sending your hands down to your heels, and then bringing the shoulder blades together quite firmly. So lots of squeezing in the upper back. Try to keep your neck relaxed at this stage. Well, throughout the asana. So lovely stretch across the top of the chest. 
real compression into the shoulder blades. And if you want to add on from there, you can lift your hands up away from your body, changing a little bit of the stretch, changing some of the muscles. The pressure on the muscles, I guess. Watch that it doesn't come up into the neck in any kind of tension. And then we're releasing, so taking the arms back down, releasing the hands, a little bit of a shake. Uh, and then clasping them in front, we're going to do exactly the same. We're taking the hands down, bringing the same, but on, on the other side bringing the shoulder blades away from each other, rounding the shoulders forward, bringing your elbows together. So still staying upright, not curling in the lower back, but widening across the shoulders at the back, squeezing in at the front and then lifting your arms. Really hard not to round in the back here. That temptation to send the mid back out behind. And release, come back down. And down. So staying in your kneel or in your seated position for a moment here to take the chin to chest. And then coming all the way up. We're going to come into Bandha Konasana. So taking the heels together, toes together, hello right foot, hello left foot, let them say hi to each other, knees out to the sides, pressing your knees down to the mat, bringing your heels in towards you as much as you can, you can use your hands to pull in, get that nice big stretch, we haven't done a lot of big stretch in the legs today, we've been focused mainly on the top half, but we have done some. So here we go, nice big opener, and we'll extend into that. So we're gonna be leaning forward with your breath. Make sure that you are breathing out to come forward and breathing in to come back up. It's such a lovely extension of this asana when you move into breathing with that bellows kind of movement. Slowly out as you come forward, breathing in as you come up. And as you come up, Always making sure that you come all the way up. You can feel your sit bones on the floor, the crown of your head is lifted up, the back is as straight as it can be before folding forward again. And we're not looking for a huge amount of movement there. The movement is just in the pelvis. We want to be changing again the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles that are being put under strain, intentional strain. So we we strain to strengthen. We move to add flexibility and stability. So just flexibility alone is not, it's wonderful, but it's not good on its own. We want that stability of the joint too. We want to have, we want to have the strength all around, everything being completely supported. And then coming all the way back up. Let's take a left leg out, right leg in. And you can fold your foot under a little. So turning the sole of your foot up towards you, top of the foot coming towards the ground. And you'll find hopefully that you've got much more of your leg on the ground here. And another little bit of a side bend. So we're gonna come over to the left leg, right arm coming up. Mm 
we can look up if you wish. If that feels like it's uncomfortable in your neck, take your gaze forward. If you want to add on, you can bring your forearm on the inner edge of your extended left leg. And then we're lifting up to come out, swapping around. So right leg comes out, left leg comes in. Again, taking the time to turn the foot, sitting up lovely and tall, pressing that right knee into the floor. And then we're sliding down the right leg. This time left arm comes up, straight up. And again, if you wish to add on, you can take the arm a little lower into the floor, open up the chest. So we're not going to bring that left shoulder around. And breathe and smile. Well done, lots of work in the top of the body today, in the neck and the shoulders. And let's lift again. So we're lifting on the left, coming out nice and gently. Let's take both legs out in a wide sit and pressing both knees flat bringing your toes back towards you. So heels pushing away, sitting up nice and tall. And we're going to turn to face the left leg. So both hands come to left, both sit bones staying on the mat. Last little seated twist, right hand to left knee, left arm coming behind, long in the torso. Head turning all the way around. <laughs> well, okay, not all the way around, but looking behind you and bringing your eyes into it as well. So lots of movement in the eyes, squeezing every little bit so that you can get that left shoulder opened up behind you, using your hands and your arms. <sighs> Breathe and release eyes head, neck. Now, if you've got neck problems, that will have felt quite intense. Go to where works for you. And we're going to go left hand onto right leg, right arm coming out and behind. Don't seem to have as much room this side. There we go. I don't know how that's even possible. <sighs> Probably I don't have as much twist on this side today. Remember your eyes, all those muscles. You might find as you breathe out, you have a little bit more space to twist. Opening up your right shoulder. And release, release your eyes, release your head, your neck. Well done. Coming all the way back to center. Take your chin to your chest. And bringing your knees and ankles and legs back towards each other. We're going to come down to lying on the mat. So coming down into a gentle roll or coming down to the mat any way that works for you. Bringing your knees into your chest, giving them a nice big squeeze. Taking your arms out to the sides, we're coming into another twist. So lots of twists today, lots of movement in the spine, bringing your legs over to one side, your head over to the other side, shoulders on the floor.
And let's gently uncurl from this position and come to the other side. So bringing your head back to center. Knees floating across the body over to the other side. And bringing your head to the opposite side. Bring your head back to center, bring your knees back to center. Stay in the center, give yourself a big hug. Well done, bring your forehead up to your knees if you wish. If you're done with moving your neck and head today, stay where you are. Just a nice big squeeze into the chest. A little bit of massage from the internal organs, rock from the side to side. And then bringing yourself into your shavasana. So in Shavasana today, take up lots of space. Remember, this is the most important part of your yoga practice. We open everything up, we stretch, we move, we get the blood flowing, the lymph flowing, we get all our muscles awake. We push the bones so they can be stronger. And then we come into our relaxation pose where everything that needs to happen can happen. The detoxification process comes after your practice, starts with your shavasana. Close your eyes, take up space, make sure you have plenty of room and squeeze your toes. Squeeze all the muscles in your toes, clench your fists, as small as you possibly can make them. Take that tension up into your legs, into your arms, into your pelvis, lift your pelvic floor, squeeze your belly, engage your chest, your neck, your jaw, the whole of your face, all your features. Squeeze every single muscle in your body as tightly as you possibly can. And release. Let go completely. And one more time. Toes, fingers, legs, feet, arms, pelvis, belly, chest, neck, shoulders, back, spine, back of the head, the whole of your face, your jaw, every single muscle in your body squeezing as tightly as it possibly can and hold and hold and hold can you squeeze a little tighter and release take a deep breath and one more time squeeze every single muscle in your body starting from your toes and your fingers moving up through your legs and your arms and your pelvis and your belly and your chest and the whole of your back and the sides of your body your neck and your jaw and your face squeezing as tightly as you possibly can and then a little tighter still squeeze 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 and release bring your attention to your breath Breathing in through your nostrils, breathing out through your mouth. Allowing yourself to feel heavy. And soft and completely relaxed, melting into your mouth. Feeling strong, feeling centered and balanced. Feeling confident that your body knows what it is doing. And then you've given it the best start for your day today. Breathing in and out, easily, smoothly, comfortably, at your own pace. 
Noticing the quality of that air as it comes in through your nostrils, breathing in light and warmth and power and peace and clarity and calm. Breathing out and letting go, making space. As you can rid your body of all the stale air in your lungs, knowing you have made space for refreshing new air. As you breathe out, feeling yourself sink a little deeper into a state of deep, peaceful relaxation. Breathing in and out easily. Starting to be aware of your surroundings again. Feeling your fingers and toes. Noticing the space around you. And on your next inhalation, and exhalation coming to rest on your right side. And your next inhalation and exhalation. When you're ready, coming up to sitting. With your eyes closed. And bring your hands to heart center. Pressing the palms of your hands together, feeling strong, feeling connected with yourself, with your surroundings, with the rest of the world. And let's just rub the palms of the hands together and get some heat and warmth. Pop them over your eyes and gently blink into that space. You take a deep inhalation. Letting go, breathing out, floating your hands back down to Namaste. Namaste. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Thank you for joining you, mind, body, soul on the mat. And have a wonderful, wonderful day.